local board input in relation to 80 Vincent Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. Um, I'm just joined here with, with support. Come on up, Jim. Support from uh, Jim Donald, a fellow board member. And I hope you don't mind. I've also brought uh, local businessman, Mr. John Savory, who can shed some light on this um, matter, so rather than me communicating it. Yep. If that's okay. Um, look, just, just a, a quick run through because we've only got five minutes, but um, obviously the board is quite concerned about um, this uh, recent proposal. We understand big, we've, got, we've got a couple of properties that we're looking at um, at the moment and we're around strategic nature. We've been very, um, I think, bending over um, backwards in regards to some um, reserve land being used for development in areas around Flatbush and we've got a huge contribution around the Whakaranga Town Centre, I think, in the facility of $40 million. So I think, you know, we've, we're certainly playing our part, but in regards to the small um, car park, w I think, we, to be fair to say, we're quite dismayed that this is where we're starting to go. Um, and there's, I guess there's two issues here, and I'll, I'll move on to Mr um, Savory in a moment to clarify the past. Um, but I, I, there's two, two issues. One, we disagree with Panuka around the initial, um, how the land was vested in council. We also disagree with Auckland Transport that the car park is no longer um, required. First of all, we dis and, I, and I raised this when we when Panuka came to us that I, and having experience from Monaco City Council, quite familiar with how land is vested in council around developments and my suspicion was that it was car parking contribution and, and Mr Savory will verify that. Secondly, um, around Auckland Transport's um, lack of wanting to actually um, continue to maintain these car parks. These are car parks and they're all across the, our city and our region that serve local local businesses. Whether in town centres or local neighbourhood centres like this, these car parks are there to serve the centre. And not only that, um, oh, and to compound it in this particular area, um, Council has allowed a, a, a New World um, supermarket to go in with not adequate car parking for staff on site. And so over the, over the, over the time that that's been there, more and more car, cars are parking out on the street and Auckland Transport have actually got lots of um, no stopping lines. So they can't have it both ways. We can't be restricting uh, car, you know, through our resource consent process, not, not demanding developers provide car parking and then Auckland Transport come and shut down streets where people are parking and then come and say that this car park in this vicinity is not used because every, every day of the week it's, it's full and that includes the weekends probably not on a Sunday, but certainly five days and a Saturday. Um, <coughs> as, I, as I say, the, um, so, so that's our gripes in regards to this. I, I think I'll, I'll pass over to Mr. Savory now in the, in the initial time. Um, and I just want to introduce Mr. John Savory, who has run a very successful pharmacy, John Savory Pharmacy there for, I think, over 55 years. And he, was, he, was, um, he started the business there when this, when this um, property was developed. So he can shed some more light on it. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Council, Mr. Um, Chairman and Councillors. <coughs> um, <coughs> I was one of the original tenants in this block. Um, first of all, I'd like to point out that they've got 80 Vincent Street there, but from my numbering, uh, 80 is actually a doctor's surgery. Um, I think the, they're talking to the car, about the car park adjacent to that. <coughs> um, when, when I was negotiating with the landlord, over the tenancy of that, uh, um, my shop, I was talking to him about parking and he assured me that parking wouldn't be a problem because as part of his building permit, he had to vest in the council a big chunk of land that was part of his property, which would the council would then provide parking. That, was hap that happened originally. It was originally a gravel car park. It was then chip sealed by the council. Um, some time later and then a little, um, some considerable time later than that, it was actually hot mix sealed and it's a p car park. It's also attached to the service lane at the back of the shops um, and it is necessary for access through the back of the shops for the big trucks to get through because there is no real, to, to try and back a truck down and or back it out, out onto the adjacent street would be a huge um, inconvenience and a risk to traffic because it's a blind hill that they back out onto. So being able to drive through the car park into that service lane is important. 
the piece of land was was taken basically from the landlord and vested or the developer and vested into the council because at that stage council saw it as their job to provide parking i think they paid a nominal sum to the council because without a, a con uh, without a consideration you can't have a contract um, and that was passed to him. That count, that car park <coughs> is desperately necessary because as David said, AT have been around and pa um, painting yellow lines all along the curb all around the place. Um, and they have reduced that and, and it is really part of the, the block. It's been regarded as part of that block. If council really want to do is, um, absolve themselves from the responsibility for maintaining it, um, fairness would suggest that it should be offered back to the owners of the block and um, and, and probably at, if you need money a nominal con a consideration and probably an inflation escalation on that consideration would be somewhere between 150 and 100 dollars for, for the taking over of it that would then absolve council for the responsibility for the parking um, I happen to know I'm still a consultant to the pharmacy that's there and I happen to know the owner of the building of the block and I know that they are sufficiently concerned to be seeking legal advice um, about what their remedies are. Donald, you want to I'd like to say thank you for listening to us. I have spoken to Manhal Patel and he has said to me if that car park goes That'll be the end of my business. It's hard enough working in retail now with online purchasing. And so he's very supportive of what has been said today. And I, and I would just uh, reiterate, I think the board would support Mr. Savory's comments um, if in regards to the, um, the car park. The car park was, was a, res a car park a parking contribution as part of the development, there to serve the development. If Auckland Transport don't want to continue to maintain it, we shouldn't be selling it. We should be giving it, providing it back to the development uh, to maintain if Auckland Transport, either, either Auckland Transport continue to maintain it, or, or um, if they want to renege on that, then it go back to the developer. Um, have, I'm just not sure, in your report, have you got a, pl um, a plan? Yeah, mm. yeah. Can we just Can we just pop that up for a sec? Is that... No? That. It's, in, it's in the written report. Yeah. Or, sorry, I'm just on, oh, well, uh, yeah. on page oh. 80. So we, I thought there. we had a whole lot of yeah. technology here. Well, it, it, a hub it, and everything. There you go. No? It, it, it's part sorry, of it's probably because it's probably I've given the last minute. It doesn't, it doesn't really show it very clearly, but you can see the. This is um, more, no, not more Street, um, Cook Street, Wellington Street. It's in the report. Right close to a roundabout there, and this is a service lane. You can manage it down. Th this doesn't actually give you any of the context, to be to be honest. But this is the back of the service, and you imagine any kind of normal block of, block of shops, the, and, and it's on a quite a steep, well, sort of about a, not 30 degree perhaps um, thing. You imagine the typical tip top trucks or Coca Cola trucks doing deliveries to the back of the superette there, trying to back out onto that into that um, street. Up here, it's very dangerous. Oh, yeah, um, I, I think you got your decky. Got a laser on the top here somewhere. Yeah. So if we, so if we, there's, there's, a, there's quite a, a busy road here, um, and this has a quite a gradient on it. This is the the, the service lane. Now my understanding of a service lane, our, so so the back so the service lane in the back here. Now correct me if I'm wrong. Is is a lane that you know has it's a through lane, not a, not an in and out. It's on a driveway, and I would actually question whether there's an easement on that car park anyway, as Mr Savory mentions, you can't, you've got to get out that way. You can't take a big truck, a big Coca-Cola truck or whatever they're going to deliver. There's a standard, you know, quite large trucks go around to these superettes and that, the back, down the back of the alleyway and then speak the <coughs> back up and then backing out onto that, that road there, which, is, which would be quite dangerous. Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, I can't here. see it, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so trying to back, back a truck up. I mean, I've, I've just came here today and my trains have been, and that's bad enough to drive in reverse, but a big articulated truck. Off, off the top of that picture, under the 80 and the V, the v for Vincent, there is quite a hill, and it's a blind hill. You'll come blatting over that at 50k, and if there's a truck trying to back out of there without any visibility, there's going to be an accident. So with that, all <coughs> that in board, I hope yep. the committee can take that into account. Um, 
So, David, um, in our report here, that's been reported back that it is not AP's strategy to provide public parking to a small number of dominant businesses or their staff. Do, do, do you disagree with that? Well, that, well that's, that's, that's this world, uh, Mr Chairman, and I can assure you back in the Howard Borough Council days and certainly the Monaco City Council days, that wasn't the, the stance. We've provided these are all right across our city. It's, it's just but, uh, and today, in this world, AT now takes a stance on oh, no, we're not going to provide that. Can, can I answer that? Yeah, it's, it's the a, current town planning requires that if you do a development, you need to provide parking on site. And adjacent to there, below that picture that you can see there, there is a shopping centre which ha now has some 50, 60 car parks on their premises because that was part of their consent. The, the philosophy that pertained when the, our block was built, that block was built, was that council provided it. Under today's circumstances, if you wanted to build that, you would have to provide that car parking and you would have to maintain it. So as I said previously, the only sensible thing to do if, you, if AT don't want to keep it is to pass it back to the owners of the building and tell them, okay, well, it's yours, keep it. Because under town planning, they will actually go against town planning principles by taking that car parking away. And we, and we would support that through you, Mr Chairman, because as I saying, that was a requirement of the consent. And with, with, a, with AT continue to provide it, we'd probably agree that they don't need to. but. It should be provided back uh, you know, to, to continue to be service for that development. Okay, we've got quite a role. Not, not to add, not to throw salt in the wound and then actually sell it from underneath the developers. Well, uh, the issue elicited a lot of interest. We have seven, eight. <laughs> Newman, Please, Wayne Walker, Stuart Hills, Questions. Cashel, Cooper, Casey, Philippa. Uh Thank you. Uh, i got two questions, Just Councillor Toe. Question. I was no referring to um, I don't want to comment, just a question. Uh, sentence yeah. four in a, in a report which is set out on item 11. Please you might, question, please. might have it in front of you. Oh, I just want to re uh, read to you two sentences from that same paragraph and then ask you a comment. It said, Panuku also worked with Auckland Transport and provided advice that AT's evaluation criteria used for the parking properties project in terms of the catchment utilisation, transport and context consistent with a divestment strategy for AT parking strategies. That says, the strategy covers the criteria for divestment of off-street parking, including consideration of plans for increasing public transport investment in the area. My statement would be that probably Howick has the biggest deficit of public transport infrastructure of any part of the urban Auckland. So could you maybe elaborate on the PT strategy for <laughs> Howick? and tell us about the alternate methods available for people if, if private vehicles and parking isn't an option. You're, you're probably more, more informed than most being a former Monaco City Council <laughs> councillor, um, Councillor Newman, and um, obviously how it is very isolated and, and it's on the, the um, edge of the coast, so it's very, very poor public transport into our whole area. And we've Obviously that's why we work on Amity to provide better busways and so forth. But certainly to the Howick village itself, out to that extent, of our ward, it's very poor, absolutely very poor. Yep. My, my, fo my follow-up question, um, looking at the where Panuku is involved, and it, it's a bit of a sore point for me personally, being from Monday Day and Papakura, I'm looking at transforms, unlocks and support, and I note that Howick's in the support column for Panuku in terms of their investment and what they're doing to help regenerate town centres. So can you elaborate on what beyond the divestment here, what Panuku is doing to assist in the revitalisation of Howick and the support role that it's got? <laughs> um, it depends what that's referring to. I mean, I'd probably seek advice. I'm happy to answer that, but maybe seek advice from Letitia um, regarding what that's referring to, whether it's Howick Village or whether it's the ward at large. Uh, no, it's the Howick Town Centre. Like Howick Town Centre. If you can't, if there's nothing. Well, there are, well, there are two other properties within the Town Centre, and I'm sure she can answer it as well um, when she reports. Um, one, we are working with Panuku on a proposed development, so we're being quite proactive in that regard um, to actually get a bit, a bit. And we're actually offering up more of, a la of land than Panuku were initially proposing, so we're actually saying, let's do a 
it's still alive. So we're not, so as I say, how it will, how it local forward, we're not against disposal of properties, but so we have in other cases been very proactive. Yeah. Thank you. Can, can I answer that? Can I make a comment? Uh, this particular area is a, a discrete area. It's not part of the town centre. It is actually surrounded by residential areas, and the streets in those <coughs> residential areas are quite narrow. Um, when cars park both sides of the road, I have a struggle to get my car down, let alone a bus. There is really no appropriate public transport access to this area at all. Councillor Walker, Wayne Walker. Sure. Um, was there any consultation done with businesses on either the part of Auckland Transport or Fenuki? Well, I, don't, I don't understand there to be, um, and that was one of our concerns. It's, you know, this is one of the things that came to the board. We're the only ones privy to it, as, as you are, and you know, where's the public consultation in general on these things? You know? sure. The but other question, though, uh, okay, still, got yeah. the answer to that. The other question I've got, um, and I can appreciate that uh, it may not exist, but is it is it conceivable that with the provision of enhanced provision of cycleways and walkways, that there could be significant amounts of parking taken out of circulation in the Howick area? Are there any cycleways or the like at this point? Not, not, a, not in that area. And I can appreciate that there probably isn't any plan at this point, but obviously could well be. So I just yeah. emphasise yet again the need for foresighting and backcasting before question. we yep. lose yep. things across the region. Yep. Thank you. Councillor Stewart. Yeah, thank you. Um, <coughs> so can you just tell me how many how many shops have we actually got there? There's a doctor's surgery, a chemist, yeah. hair salon. Yeah, there's um, there were originally eight, and there are now seven because the superette took over the um, greengrocers and combined the two. Yes, and the doctor surgery, um, <coughs> which is on the corner, it's on the end there, yeah, yeah, on, the the, end. on the right hand end corner yeah. there, uh, does have a lot of um, elderly people that, that visit, and the parking is that correct? That a lot of the parking yeah. is also for wheelchairs. The, the uh, entrance is on that access. car park side, councillor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and and so for a lot of these businesses, if they wanted to have a home enterprise and they wanted to set up home enterprise and work from home, they would actually have to provide car parking. So the the, the amount of car parking we've actually got there probably is almost not even enough for a home enterprise for the amount of businesses that you have. Would you agree with that? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. What is it, about um, 10 or 12. 11, 11, 12 car parks, that's all it is? It's yes, and, and I think I think you did point out that it is a commercial area, very much a commercial area. You've also got a school, you've got the new world that's just opened up, yeah. and you do have a lot of rat running from the Cook Street, uh, Picton Street, Cook Street, Wellington, um, Moore Street, that come through that, and that, as you said, it is, it is, there is a bit of a dip in a hill. It's quite steep. And um, <laughs> that if they took away that car parking, it probably, I don't, would you agree that there probably wouldn't be enough car parking spaces for, no. um, especially those visiting the doctor's surgeries? And I know that the doctor there is, is one that actually um, does speak Mandarin and Cantonese, <coughs> and we also we are also offering a service for um, those people. Question mark there, Councillor. <laughs> Thank, <Stewart>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Um, Take yeah. the picture. <laughs> the um, the I've had a look around. So, is there time restrictions on that car park? On those car spaces? I no, I, d I don't think there is. No, there's not. There's no time restriction, so no. it actually would be beneficial to have it. Yeah. There certainly are all, on all the road ones. Certainly are, yeah. So, so it's predominantly staff and business owners rather than customers parking customers. For all day. Uh, we, no. we can't. We can't give you that. I, mean, I would say it would be a mixture. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Okay, but so far, but you could 
park there all day if you... You could, yeah. There's no, no restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing, just, you know, not saying... I'm just looking at the several bus routes that are actually within walking distance of that area on the new network. So, you know, the 711, 72, 72 c 72... I'm just, yeah, highlighting that there is very close to bus stops. Not right out the front door. If, if, if you looked at the topography, there are steep hills between the, that area and the bus stop. The buses go around the ridge. That's at the bottom of the valley. Very, very and it's, they are very steep hills. It's quite a distance from that roundabout up to the, the ridge road. It's probably 2.5 k's or something. And it's very steep. Very poor stairs. So. <laughs> Councillor Cashmore. <coughs> Two quick questions, Mr Chair. Who owns the laneway? AT, as far as I know. No, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. AT owns the laneway? Yep. Well, 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 it's a service, <laughs> it's a service lane. It's a service the, the, lane. They, they, they see yeah. it when they did the car park, yeah, they did the great. service lane as well, and I can't imagine them doing it if they didn't no. own it. <laughs> and there seems to be a lot of other car parks on the commercial premises surrounding that. Who owns those? Are they Auckland Transport or are they private? They well, what are the car parks? Sorry? There's none on the side. No, no on the other, the, road. Road. the other premises oh. around, they, they are owned by the people because those developments happened much later under yeah. different um, and, and council. They're, and they're separate developments, so there's a mechanics and a, a tyre shop. And, yeah, they're, they're owned by the, by the building. They're separate yep. individuals, yeah. Yep. Cool. Councillor Cook. Thank you. A lot of questions have been answered, but um, in terms of... Um, so you said you don't know who accesses the site, and it hasn't got a, a street number on it anyway, so it's hard to say. But um, do you think that the lounge next door and the automotive and people like that also access this car park? Definitely. Yes. So <coughs> has there been any discussion about a group of these businesses buying this? You know. In the body of the report on page 79, item item number 15, yeah. there's an adjoining landowner has expressed interest yeah. in purchasing 18 Vincent Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, um, if AT have been approached about putting some more disability parks outside the family doctors, because I can, I think I can only see one. There is only one. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that might be another thing that needs to address both, because we've got no AT. That's right, thank you. Uh, other questions have been answered for me. Councillor Casey. Oh, this is kind of, if, if I'm right, Auckland Transport are saying that we don't want to, what was it they said? Um, we'll keep looking after dominant, The dominant um, businesses, we, it's not it's not our, it's not our yeah. game to provide parking for dominant businesses and their staff. But Panuku have, and they've had no engagement with anybody, nor do they have to. In Panuku, they are they're not engaging with the businesses, you've said, and yet they're about, or they could divest to make one business a dominant business and give them all the car parks. Am I, am I, is that, is that, am I following well, this right? We, we suspect that this is why this has come up. There's been, probably been an offer from an adjacent business to buy the car right. park. So thank you, that's, uh, that really bothers me that, what's bothering me is, the, um, I'm, I'm anxious to speak to Panuku about easements uh, for the big trucks that won't be getting back out the service lane. Yeah, thank you. So this, it doesn't make any sense that Auckland Transport haven't addressed that issue when they, they decided to make the decision to give it over to Panuku. So it's a question really, really for the really staff. Welcome if you do that doesn't that make any sense to me at all, because that's it's, it's like a no-brainer. If that area were sold and developed, and it would stopped. actually exacerbate the, the parking problem, because you'd have more services. So do you think that's, well, the, that, that's a question for Panuku. That doesn't make any that's sense. That's for Panuku. So, Panuku so, so I would say we really welcome that question, Council, because our, it's a no-brainer. My suspicion is there must be an easement on that piece of land to allow vehicles to come out of it, service Speak lane. Because there's no way you would propose a service lane like that and reverse trucks back up a hill out onto a busy road. I mean, well, it's a danger. I mean, it's all about health and safety these yep. days. And uh, well, Auckland Transport think that's sensible, um, you know. All will be revealed. 
right, to make a councillor Quax to finish the question. Well, no, Mr. Chair, I, I wanted to just uh, speak to this item. Okay. So we're in actually question time. So do you want to move the motion on the screen, which isn't on the screen, but it says to um, thank David. No, I don't. I, I don't want to approve. I'll second Councillor Quack. It's uh, it's a local board. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So we've got members of the board. I'm happy to move them. Seconded by Councillor Stewart. I'm happy to move them. Move it. Okay. Not happy to so say we're thanking David. David, Jim, and sorry, Mr. Savory, John. Sorry, can't see behind here. So all those in favour? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your thank presentation. You. Right, we will now move on to the item, which is item 11, where uh, Anthony and Letitia to come up. And <sighs> thank you, folks. So it seems as though we have the four four items there proposed to be sold and one of them is contentious with the other three apparently 